The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all back to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to start off the day uh, with uh, eh, coming to you at this time. <clears throat> The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have? Well, certainly a sell-off a uh, little bit on the news. The market was a little weak already. Uh, going into Friday, uh, we had kind of a hint uh, that the market might be weak, and that was the put-call ratio at only about uh, 10 percent. That means that 90% uh, of uh, what was being bought was, uh, uh, although it wasn't a lot, uh, was uh, were uh, calls. And, of course, it was a half day, and you look at it. I probably should have looked at it harder, but generally when you do a half day, I don't spend a lot of time looking at data uh, very closely because that doesn't seem to be indicative. Well, this one certainly was. Um, and I was along a position, I stopped out today, uh, not the end of the world, but I eh, probably should have been a little quicker to the whip. I just didn't see that much downside in the market. We got about four times more than I was looking for. And maybe that was a little bit of yesterday and then today with the president, um, eh, probably working on a negotiation, uh, for, uh, his China, um, negotiations. Probably a wise thing to not act like you're too rushed to get them right now. And the Chinese probably thinking, well, maybe politically we should just wait until after the election. And of course, it probably actually does play into the hands of the president. So I don't think they've got a good position one way or the other uh, to push the markets around, I mean, the Chinese, to delay this, or at least delay. Uh, they keep on talking about one, two, and three phases and all that seems horribly complicated. Uh, but for what I can say is I don't think that anything has really truly changed. Uh, the market was just kind of weak. We had an air pocket, and that's been it. I've used the last two days to go ahead and start adding positions. May have added a little early yesterday, but uh, I think I got uh, another one today. It was fairly good. I added uh, actually three positions. Um, if you're looking for short-term uh, moving higher, the only thing really to look at now is overly shorted stocks. Uh, that's how I got stopped out today. But I think uh, we probably have seen some kind of low for the year uh, to this morning. And it's not that there's that much on the upside in the indexes, uh, but today is probably... And I'm going to say maybe one or more two days. And then the volume is just going to slowly each day uh, turn south. Um, you know, today we've got about four and a half billion shares uh, as we start the show, which is actually fairly good. Uh, but we'd probably be needing to push six or seven billion right now uh, to get some kind of big 10 billion uh, shares on the downside. So, again, I think this is kind of a little bit of, of a bear trap in the market. Um, and it's just very tough to get into the last couple, two or three weeks and see a huge sell off in the market. Uh, we may have, th this may be as good as it gets. Now, there's not that many people wanting to jump in and buy something before the end of the year. Uh, the press is out there saying the sky is falling, but the volume falls. And I bought a stock today that had a, what, 15, 16, 17 days to cover, something like that. That means that just if the people that want to get out and the stock went sideways, the volume didn't increase, it's just as the same uh, as it was, you'd have 17 days just of people covering that. And I went back to a stock that 
uh, has done this in the past, coming up into uh, Christmas and the first part of the year. Um, so we added that one today in the short term. I had a couple of stocks that uh, have done well for us in the past, uh, in the longer term. And I'm looking into next year on those, but we had to wait for a fairly decent pullback. I got one a little bit more than I wanted. You always have to say, hey, you know, could it get to that point? And hey, maybe you don't want it if it does. Well, we got that today. So it's a little bit better than I thought, or a little lower price than I thought. But again, massive, massive shorting. Anytime anything looks even remotely um, like it's headed down, uh, the shorts are all over the market, and that pretty much turns it around. Um, what I also uh, would have liked to seen if the market was going to be headed a great deal lower would have been uh, the bonds to actually uh, take a header today uh, that were up uh, three bucks on the TLT tells you a great deal. Another uh, indicator, I think, uh, is that the VNQ is higher. It's up 58 cents today. Uh, if we're going to take a massive header lower and it's, it's going to be issues, the REITs are going to suck. And that's going to be the bonds, too. We're not going to get this kind of easy um, market that just goes down in certain sectors and then that's it. We're going to see, if we're looking for some major top out here, I want to see the V&Q get hammered. I want to see the TLT get hammered. Instead of what I saw was the TLT get a massive shot uh, in the arm of uh, a fire hose full of cash, probably from the Fed and the Treasury, uh, and that's why we're probably seeing the TLT up 2% today. Um, other stuff than that, we still have weak stocks out here, uh, but uh, you know what? Uh, I have a feeling that it's going to be incredibly tough to, to see shorts pay off between now and the end of the year. Another stock that I would have loved to seen blow up today, uh, if you wanted to make the bearish case through the end of the year, would have been uh, Tesla. Uh, they may be throwing giant, uh, uh, giant uh, cannonballs at the windows of those cars, but uh, guess what? Uh, not so much... Uh, you know, when a stock continues to have 30 40% short interest, it doesn't really matter uh, whether or not the market's going up or down. But if the market was headed down and significantly, you would have seen Tesla break most likely. In the past, when the markets have decided to, to uh, have some decent turns lower, we've seen Tesla uh, have a lot of people run for the, uh, run for the uh, exits. Um, probably one of the most overpriced stocks in all of my trading history. Uh, and uh, you can't really get to smack it today. So, I, I, you know, there's a lot of reasons to say, hey, I look at the start and it's weak. But uh, seasonality trumps all. And uh, this may be it. So we want to keep an eye on it. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can give me a uh, email at path at tfnn.com. We'll be back to a little bit of history. Histoire, and then we'll be into charts for the rest of the day. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Wow, it got really loud for some reason when I was came back. Don't know why that is. Anyway, uh, as we look at the markets, uh, still off, or well, off 29 points on the S&P cash. So eh, no big rally yet, but we got to be looking probably in the next 24 hours of a fairly extensive move higher. I haven't seen the volume that suggests that fund buying has come in at all. Uh, and uh, we're going to get some, just depends on where. But uh, certainly uh, when they decide to buy, it's probably going to be eh, at this time of day, maybe later in the day. We're going to see them uh, jump in and like uh, uh, any kind of pond, when a giant elephant jumps in, it's going to create some rather large waves for the size of the pond. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. But don't be surprised if either today or tomorrow uh, we're back over 3,100 on the S&P cash. And... Is there a whole lot higher than that to be had before the end of the year? Maybe not, but uh, again, the stocks that you want to watch out for are massively shorted stocks this time of year because uh, uh, very tough to uh, get uh, sellers out of those stocks if they've not sold by this time of the year. Um, what else do we have uh, going on here? Um, good afternoon. Does market head in the direction if the tariffs go into effect on the 15th? you expect USO or TLT to break out? Um, I think that the tariff issue has uh, way overblown. I think the issue, uh, the goal all along has been to wean uh, the uh, U.S. off of China. Uh, as it will not be an ally going forward, but it will be a at, at best a competitor and at worst uh, one of the Axis states going forward. And so we need the ability to make uh, and uh, ship all kinds of steel and aluminum and everything else. Uh, I think the longer that we go forward as a country, the bigger the downside is if we can't be self sufficient. And of course, everybody that tells me uh, today uh, that the U.S. can't do this and can't do that were the same people that said that we couldn't be energy self 
sufficient. Uh, if you put a challenge and a giant pot of gold at the end of a uh, of a big uh, uh, challenge to an American entrepreneur, they will find a way if it's at all possible. So when everybody tells me you just can't make this, or you can't do that, or you can't bring manufacturing back or everything else, I just, I think of global cooling, everything was going to be an ice age in 1979, uh, that we had peak oil in 2006. The one thing I know is that, uh, you know, it's always problematic when someone tells me something, because uh, uh, just like you make, you know, a million different predictions and you glom onto one, uh, it's problematic to all think that these folks actually know anything that they're talking about. Anyway, uh, we uh, will persevere, and of course, we've got a little bit of history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 2001, inventor Dean Kamen unveils the Segway, a self-balancing, battery-powered vehicle. On the TV show Good Morning America, the Segway uses computers and motors in its base to keep itself upright where the user is riding it. Users shift their weight to control the Segway. Why not consider it a commercial success? The Segway has become a familiar icon of personal transportation. And what uh, what was his name? Something Blart Mall Cop. Um, one of the things that you probably don't know is that uh, because of financial issues, it never was the big seller that they were looking for. Uh, Dean Kamen actually sold the company in 2009. One year, almost to the day, uh, that uh, Mr. Kamen sold his company uh, to another uh, big, rich dude in the UK. The big, rich dude went over a giant 100-foot cliff on a Segway. So the CEO, owner of the company, killed himself on the device that he was uh, selling. And uh, I don't think most people know that uh, eh, the owner of the Segway, at least in 2010, killed himself on a Segway. I don't think I'd be riding one of those things around by a cliff no matter what. But, uh, well, you know the rest of the story now. Now you know the rest of the story. Yes, you do. Okay, uh, we'll get into some charts in here and have some other emails. Um, where's my chart? Come on, Mr. Chart, where are you at? There you are. Okay. Um, does the market hint its direction of tariffs go in effect the 15th? Eh, I kind of answered that, I think. Do um, you think the USRL or TLT? Is going to break out? No, I do not. Um, one of the other things that I would have loved to see today, too, uh, is uh, some major moving uh, that held up uh, in Yang, which is the Chinese uh, leveraged ETF. Uh, it got to $52.40 today. Uh, but when you look at this in the chart, this looks like it uh, is going to run into a lot of resistance. It's $52.40 level, and maybe we've just gotten that. Uh, the downside uh, to the charts here is that you have a pretty nice uh, three-gap play setting up uh, for Yang, and the, you know maybe we get one more gap, and that's it. Maybe you get up to 54 bucks, but that leaves a couple of big gaps down here to get filled to. I suspect that a lot of the weakness when the history is written about this uh, in the future is going to be about the the real problems that no one's talking about that are over in China today. But uh, 5166 on Yang right now, um, starting to look like, you know, it's kind of giving it up. And I have a feeling uh, that is a lot of the cash that's coming in uh, via the fire hose of the Fed. And of course, those guys are on their uh, quiet period where they can't actually talk till the 9th and 10th. Uh, that would be a day starting next week, isn't it? Uh, is it 9th and 10th or 10th and 11th? I think it's the 10th and 11th. Uh, the announcement's on the 11th. So we're about a week away from the Fed. That same uh, 11th is 
the uh, day that they all go delta neutral uh, on options, and then, of course, uh, options expiration the 20th of this month. Uh, there's a little bit going on that we need to know about uh, early on, uh, and then we'll get to the uh, question. Do, 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 do. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, okay, got a question here, and then we'll get into this. Um, please share any knowledge you have of Apple, Foxconn moving iPhone production partially away from China. They've been doing it for two years. Um, they bought a big factory, Apple did, down in Vietnam that used to make Nokia phones, if I want to think that's correct. But they've been doing that for over two years. As soon as uh, Trump got elected, he told uh, Mr. Apple himself uh, that he better diversify his uh, places to uh, uh, manufacturing. They've already moved and got a lot bunch of that. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Okay, so we got that one taken care of. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Um, oh, wanted to get to earnings after the bell, CRM uh, tonight. Um, this thing has been kind of making um, what Bob Carver, I don't know if he's still around. He had a, a uh, pattern that he equated to look like a contact lens. And this is kind of what we're looking at here, although we kind of got a bigger gap down to this morning on Salesforce. Our earnings out after the bell, 
uh, what do we have here at 405. So they'll be into the futures. Um, I kind of think that Salesforce is slowly getting crowded out by Amazon Web Services, and especially uh, the biggest competitor right now seems to be Microsoft. Um, uh, as we already talked about, uh, Intel, some of these other ones have already tell, uh, told us that the whole cloud services business is starting to um, slow down a little bit. And that means that uh, doesn't mean that the stocks are going to zero, but does mean that probably the kind of curve uh, growth curve that we've seen in Amazon, uh, Google and Microsoft are probably a little bit over. I suspect we're probably going to get a little bit of uh, that uh, with Salesforce, too. Um, let's see what else. Oh, after the bell, anyway, 405. Uh, other big companies. Uh, after the bell is work day, uh, did open up uh, significant lower, looked like about 168, back up about 173 today. So not a lot of juice, uh, even on yesterday's downside. Uh, it's back into support right around 170. I don't see anything in the chart that tells me a whole lot about that. Uh, in the uh, semiconductor space, we also have Marvel. To, to MRVL, uh, it's a pretty small part, uh, already down, already down, uh, Tay on a gap down 24.52 before earnings announcement. Uh, before the bell, we really didn't have anything other than lands into report. Um, and of course, uh, those retailers continue to have issues. Um, again, a lot of these stocks just seem to be a little bit uh, too heavily shorted. Uh, this one kind of bounced. It had a, a lot of short uh, on this one for a while. Uh, never, you know, I'm not a big fan of shorting stocks below about 30 bucks uh, because uh, you know you can move a good 20% on a day like today. You have that kind of volume. You have a lot of shorts getting out of the way. Uh, after this kind of, this is a good stock to keep an eye on because if everybody gets short this again, it's probably not going down uh, before the end of the year. You might be able to get a buck or two out of that on the upside going in to the end of the year. Uh, to, to, to when we get to tomorrow, uh, again, not much going on uh, in the morning. Um, restoration hardware um, has uh, gone up on this gap was back when uh, I'm pretty sure this is the gap that was up when Buffett, Warren Buffett, uh, said he was getting into this stock, which seemed rather uh, insane to many of us around TFNN that have been watching this as an opportunity. But again, I'm not so sure that he just didn't get into this to run, uh, again, uh, a multitude of shorts on this. I was actually looking at this thing and hoping that the short interest, again, would uh, drop significantly and open up a position to short it. Uh, right now, this one's got about eight days to cover, uh, so it's still highly shorted. Uh, I don't know if some of those people have vamoosed in the meantime, uh, but 25% uh, eh, of the orders yesterday were for shorting. Who knows how many covered before the end of the day? But again, fairly heavily shorted, uh, and uh, you kind of coming off on this. Uh, Buffett is not perfect, uh, and you know he's had some stocks that he bought Apple right before it went down 50 bucks. Um, now he's much better off, but again, it's not a lot of timing on him. You can still make money on some of us. I just tend to stay away once he gets to uh, have about a 10% interest. Uh, he can pretty much put the stock anywhere he wants to. I'm, I'm, I'm also considering the idea that Buffett uh, has bought some of these companies lately on a way of uh, actually uh, making more money, not by owning it, but by selling options on it over time. Uh, if he can make, you know, on the average of, uh, I don't know, 25% a month uh, by underwriting options on a company he owns himself, and as soon as everybody gets uh, too bullish, 
Uh, he, they can come out with bad news or when everybody gets too bearish, uh, they can, uh, you know, decide to put out a press release. I always wonder whether or not it's not so much about how good he is anymore, but stock manipulation. Uh, but that's just a, a thought. I can't prove it quite yet. Uh, but uh, I do see it from time to time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's no reason to be buying or be shorting a stock that has uh, eight days to cover, 36% uh, short interest on the open of the float. Uh, you're just asking uh, to take a beating uh, if the right kind of news comes out. And, of course, right now we've got everybody that feeling the end of it. We'll have everybody on the news tonight saying how the end of the world's coming. Uh, that's generally the time, like I said, uh, you normally want to be able to cover your short when everybody's crying and you want to be buying uh, when everybody's crying and you want to be selling when everybody's yelling. Uh, but that's it. Um uh, what else do we have here? Get a couple more emails. Anyway, uh, as we said, restoration hardware on Wednesday night. Uh, let's see what we have. Anything on Dollar General on Thursday morning. Also Tiffany's, but it's uh, selling out. Duluth Holdings, who I like their ads. I don't have any of their stuff, uh, but they make like armored underwear for people. Not like Under Armour, but like for real working guys. Guys, you know. Uh, that look like Chewbacca, they got so much hair. The kind of people that work on trains, cars, stuff. Real men, manly men. I like their ads. Uh, haven't bought any of their stuff, though. But uh, they're doing that. Now, uh, one of the other companies that comes in this week is on Thursday. And I can imagine that we're going to see some big um, movements in this stock. Um, this was mentioned in all the uh, hubbubaloo uh, in the Ukraine, and everybody keeps dancing around uh, what these folks have to do with manipulation of the uh, 2016 and maybe possibly 2020 elections in the United States. Certainly, they have a lot of ties uh, to Putin and Russia and hackers and everything else that we uh, worry about and uh, huddle uh, in our basements about now politically. Uh, but after the bell Thursday night, now, the reason I bring this up is they may be mentioned very broadly in an upcoming um, uh, report that I think is due out either Friday or Monday on the FBI, CIA, and NSA. So watch that one very closely. I'd stay out of it. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. We're back. And the uh, question is, uh, will the fund buying start today? And, and it could, but it'd probably be late today. Of course, a lot of people were gone from last Wednesday. So it takes them a little time to get spun up. But those fund buyers will be buying sometime before probably Thursday's close. I would say that you're probably going to see a little bit uh, of uh, uh, an up move right into the close. And then if you see cons uh, uh continuation on that tomorrow, uh, then you can make a pretty good uh, educated guess that that fund money has coming in. And if you see a lot of volume, then, you know, if I was trying to game this to be bearish, I'd want to see all that cash that had, or had been spent and then up. So like I said, I'm not seeing a lot of downside right now that could change. Uh, but uh, I'd certainly want to see how the market reacts when that cash does come in. Okay, what else do we have in the emails? I think we got uh, everything caught up. Um, for the DIN, the first question we have is Microsoft. Um, again, uh, you've got about 143 is support. Uh, for Microsoft, we got up to 152.50. Again, I've been kind of worried about uh, these things kind of overshooting, especially from what we heard from uh, Intel about its server business and some of the other ones. Um, more interesting to me uh, was my personal anecdotal shipping issues uh, with uh, a couple of companies. Uh, Google has a thing called Google sh uh, Shopping and I ordered from them. It will be my last order ever from those guys. Um, I don't know how these guys even think that they're gonna be in business. Amazon itself uh, ordered some stuff, was supposed to be uh, to my residence on Sunday. Uh, it's Tuesday, it still isn't here. I don't know how much the weather had an issue, but they said it was gonna be here Sunday which means that I can't imagine that even the horrible uh, snows of uh, the weekend caused a problem it not getting down here. Uh, generally, when they do that, they said, hey, you know, we couldn't deliver today. We'll deliver tomorrow. They don't even know. Um, so did they have too much business? Uh, they did, did they just not manage it correctly? Uh, not surprised to see that this pull back. But again, my experience is anecdotal. Uh, all last week, they were shipping stuff just great to me. Uh, it only happened over Thanksgiving weekend, so maybe they had too much business that they couldn't handle. Uh, but generally, they just say, you know, uh, we've uh, had to cancel your order or whatever happened. It fell in a river, uh, fell off the back of a truck or whatever. But generally, pretty good um, Amazon deliveries over the year. So I'm going to give them a mulligan. Uh, now, the opposite side was Google has this Google shopping system uh, who uh, said that they had uh, a uh, nice product for me that was at a fairly decent price. Um, 
They said, well, it was actually going to take 10 days to ship. I told them I needed to cancel the order. I would just get it from New Egg or whatever I was buying from somebody else. And they said, I can't cancel the order. And I sent kind of a tersely worded letter yesterday to uh, the investment uh, uh, people at uh, Google, um, the uh, investment uh, uh, office at Google, asking whether they wanted to be tied to some kind of fly-by-night uh, place that wouldn't either ship your product or give you the cash back. And once you get it, if you want to return it, you've got to ship it back. But you got to ask for it, and then it takes two weeks to get cash back. And I asked them if they really thought that they were in business to compete with anybody, including Amazon, uh, or if this was some kind of Chinese uh, operation run out of a back office somewhere. So uh, it's it's been probably the worst shopping experience I've had, I'm going to say, in three or four years. Um, don't ship the product. Say it was going to ship right away. Then uh, now I'm supposed to ship the 10th and refuse to give any money back or cancel the order. Uh, so Google Shopping, I would recommend everybody avoid that. I had some other people ask me, uh, what did I buy uh, for other things? Um, I had a fairly decent ex uh, uh, experience with uh, Google Fi. That's their uh, phone business. If you buy a, uh, uh, I'll show it to you here, uh, Google Moto uh, 7, which is about a $300, $350 phone. Um, but if you get their uh, Google Fi service, which is their own uh, flavor of mostly using Wi-Fi to make your phone calls with and occasionally using um, a uh, uh, a a um, tower that belongs to somebody else. But most of the time, they're just assuming you're going to be at home and they're going to use their your own Wi-Fi so they don't have to pay a dime, uh, which is kind of an interesting idea. But if you buy the phone uh, and uh, hook it up to Wi-Fi for a handful of days and then cancel, uh, the phone's for you for, for 100 bucks. So I bought a bunch of those, set them all up, I'm going to be sending those to my nieces and nephews, so they'll all get new phones this year. Um, no, I've never really bought a Samsung 10 or any of that kind of stuff. I've always uh, had less expensive phones, but um, I've had the Google Motos now for about four years, and uh, I kind of use this Google Fi thing every year to get a new phone uh, for about 100 bucks, and uh, the phones are more than responsive. Uh, uh, Representative, no, they aren't a phone that I can uh, show off next to my Rolex watch, uh, but they work and they work fine. So that's it. If anybody wants a link uh, to the Google Fi, Fi thing so they can get one. Anyway, um, I just switched the SIMs in this one about an hour ago, and uh, I'm back online. Brand new phone for 100 bucks. Uh, I own the phone, and that's it. You just got to let Google Fi on there. For a little bit, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, yeah, the tenth of never. Anyway, uh, I'm mad at Google uh, for a variety of reasons, but I scammed them out of uh, their uh, phone, so maybe, maybe it all works out in the wash. Uh, what else is going on? Um, wanted to look at Nvidia. Uh, both them and um, uh, AMD have been going, I, we've been talking about this for a while, and that is that everybody's going to go after this business. Uh, NVIDIA um, and AMD in the video card part of the business, uh, when I looked at the ads, um, I bought a card that was about 400 bucks. Um, it was about 700 bucks 90 days ago. And everything in the catalog from AMD and NVIDIA in these video cards, the prices are massively uh, cut. And uh, that tells me a little bit about what's going to happen in the next round of earnings for AMD and NVIDIA on these video cards. We'll be back in a minute. 
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And what else do we have going on here? Uh, to do Google phony links. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll be glad to do that. Sylvia is asking for a link from my G7 phone. Um, okay, uh, to, to do what else? Oh, anyway, we're looking at NVIDIA out here. Um, uh, now a little bounce, but uh, they are selling a lot of units, but man, are they discounting heavily. Uh, that always, uh, when I see ads. And price slashing, you know, the reason that these companies are so valuable, like Intel, is year after year they can continue to have a 60, 65 percent uh, margin on their products. That's almost like printing money. I'm going to give you, uh, for every two bucks, um, you're going to get one back. Uh, so you get three bucks for every two bucks that you have. I mean, it's just like running a printing press uh, if you're in the semi business or the software business and you've got a product, even more in the software business. If you've got a, uh, a product that actually uh, does that kind of uh, business, um, AMD, NVIDIA, these guys have been doing well. Um, but the issue I was talking about uh, was uh, um, mostly like Intel and INTC. Um, now, Intel. Uh, strangely enough, screwed over all the reviewers last week 
of new products. AMD was releasing their chips, and Intel basically had uh, sent out chips for review, but uh, the reviews weren't going to come till this week. So they called everybody up uh, at like midnight before AMD's chips were going to come out and said, uh, oh, we're lifting the embargo right now. So the, the reviews would actually come out at the same time as AMD's reviews. Uh, man, did they get scorched by the uh, uh, influencers, as they're called today, or reviewers, as they were called on my day. But watch out for all of these. Uh, like I said, look for a big pop here in the next couple of days with that cash. But uh, that may be the end of that big pop. We'll be back tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. So when you can, I'll be here.